If you're like me, you love finding a new good dev tool. And I just helped create a project that allows you to figure out what other people are using on their machines. It's called Brewfiles. You can find it at brewfiles.com. In fact, we're on Product Hunt today. If you want to upvote us, that'll help us be visible to more people. And you can actually participate yourself as well by running npx share brew files in your terminal. This will package together all of your VS Code extensions, anything you've installed with Homebrew, and upload it so that your personality can be generated and you can figure out what kind of a developer you are. In this video, I just want to go over a few of the components I put together that I thought were really fun to do. And you can check out all the code yourself in the open source project linked below. All right, you ready? Let's jump in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, so here's the tool we built out and you can see here that the idea is that you're sharing your brew file, which is just a file that can be generated that shows all the different extensions you have, things that you've installed with Homebrew, stuff like that. So what I can do is just click on this and copy this and run it in my terminal. I'll show you that in just a moment here. But once you do that, it adds it to kind of the group of all those who've uploaded. To date, it looks like we've got 34 so far. We just launched this this morning. But then you can come in here and explore the tool. This takes you to the actual repo or wherever that it's found. Or you can see users that are using this. So if I come to like JQ, you'll see that it goes to the brew files page and shows you all those along with anybody who's matched. And here I am right here. So I have JQ installed. Now you can also come in here and search for anything like Astro and just see who the cool people are. So there you go. You can come inside here and then look at people's full brew files that shows all the different packages that they have installed. And probably the coolest feature is that you can generate your personality. Now what this does is kind of calculate based on what you have in your brew file, what kind of developer you are. Obviously it's making a bit of a guess and some assumptions, but it compares it with other people as well who've uploaded. So each time you go to this, it will actually update based on the people who are currently uploaded in our system. Now, all this is open source. In fact, if you come back this way and you come right inside here, you can actually see the repo. I just pushed some code to it a couple of minutes ago, but you can see here that all you have to do is run npx share brew files and it will actually find it, have you paste in a token and then just upload it to our site and it'll give you a URL to go to. Then, like I mentioned, you can visit the leaderboard, you can search for people, uh, and you can generate profiles. I should mention, this is not something I did by myself. In fact, down this way, you can see that it includes both Jess and Kyle. Kyle helped with some design, and Jess is really the brains behind the project, and also the one who uh, invited me to participate as well. And evidently, X is now going to be like that. So let's come back over here, and that's okay. We're going to jump to brew files, and I'll just search for Jess. The rubber ducky is her name right here. There we go right here. So you can visit Jess and see what she's done before. She works for Warp and I do some contract work for them as well. And this was really fun to put together with her. All right, just a couple of things I wanted to point out here. You can see that, first of all, one of the cool things is if I refresh here, I don't know if you can see how it randomizes both the text and the download numbers here. So I wanna show you kind of how I did that and I thought that was fun to do. So if I come under leaderboard, we started with this as Astro and then we moved it over to React for a couple of different reasons, but we've got a leaderboard list. This leaderboard list hits a use leaderboard, which is just a custom hook that then passes this along. And at that point, basically what it does is sends it to a package row. So as it's waiting, let me come back in here. Let's look at this package row. The package row corresponds to these right here, right? It's to this stuff right here. So you can see it's just a basic list item. We did do some kind of fun stuff with container queries, which I'll talk about in another component. But you can see that eventually when the rank and all that stuff comes in, it actually shows it like the process name here and the process downloads. But while it's waiting, it generates a random number. And this is just a function I wrote that just generates a random number. Here, this generates a random string. And then I have this on a little use effect loop where we have an interval that then clears until I get data passed down from the parent component. Once that happens, then I clear the interval and I set the name. And at that point, they're static. But that gives the appearance that it's kind of calculating the background, which really what it's doing is it's giving the website time to hit that client side. That means the initial load can be fast, and then all that comes in kind of afterwards, and you get the dynamicness of it moving around. Now, if I jump over here to the leaderboard itself, you'll see that happens here as well, except now we have 200 items that load the top 200 tools, and then they show here as well. So I thought that was really fun to do. The other thing is if I come into brew files, and let's just grab a random brew file like this one right here. If I hit generate personality, it generates this personality, and we did a couple of fun things here. So you can see how as I change around the size of the viewport, the cards move to different sections. That's done all using CSS Grid, where I've named these little blocks, and then I've just moved them around based on the viewport to different places, like here right in the middle for the dev card. So that was a really fun way to work with Grid. 
If I come over here to all brew files, you can see that as I move this down, eventually it snaps to one and I want those to be a little bit bigger. Now it's two, so the cards are smaller. Eventually it gets larger and then snaps back to three. So like the text needs to change dynamically based on the size of the card, not really the viewport. So let's look at that as well. So brew card right here, TSX. And this is another thing that I think we started with Astro and moved over to React eventually. But we've got these container queries right here. And then what I can do is just set like at size small, make it like this. But where the real power comes, like you saw, was in the actual text itself. So here we can say, when the card is small, make the text large. When the card is large, make the text extra large. When the card is 2XL, makes the, make the card uh, 2XL. So this gives you a lot of dynamicness and it was really fun to put together. Well, those are a few basic components. You're welcome to check out the repo yourself. You can do that right here. And then I just encourage you to do is to go ahead and try to upvote us on Product Hunt. I would love to see this get higher. I think we're at, what, 11 right now. So let's see if we can't get this to one by the end of the day. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.